Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the workshop uh, for today. Um, as you certainly are aware, uh, is that um, in the last few years, a lot of sea levels have uh, been added to the list. In the beginning, we had a CEO, we had a CFO, then a COO. The IT also uh, integrated that uh, list with the CIO. We have chief marketing officers. And uh, today, we will try to introduce the next C-level, which is the chief cloud officer. And uh, for doing that, you know, to know what roles and responsibilities this chief cloud officer has, we have now the presence here of uh, Mr. Bernard Pack from um, Dimension Data, who is the um, European cloud solution architect. So, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be to be with you today. I should climb that, right? Okay. <laughs> it's not virtual; it's physical. Yeah, I'm surprised. Okay, so yeah, it, it started as a joke. Um, I don't know how many of you are real cloud chief officers, but uh, we can see in a dimension data uh, when we are engaging customers more and more uh, cloud-based organizations. Or subsidiaries or teams with a budget, with people, and with a mandate. And the purpose of the presentation today is to share with you our findings on the surrounds on the cloud. Because the cloud is not only the technology, it's not only the service, there are some, some uh, business uh, requirements behind that. So three topics <coughs> to cover today are very simple. User experience, go-to-market, and business agility. Uh, on the user experience, um, the responsibility of chief cloud officers is really to manage the experience of the consumers of the services. And we have to ensure uh, when a customer is going to your website that your brand experience is really good. Okay? So we will see the implications on that. For the go-to-market, it's more about uh, being fast. When you are releasing new software products or digital product, how do you move that to the cloud from the development team? So this is a problem. And the third one, business agility, is really about the end-to-end uh, -end approach of your IT systems. Okay? So let's start with the user experience. Uh, let's ask uh, a technical expert, Ilya Grigoric from Google, he's one of them. Um, and um, <clears throat> he's uh, stating that we should think about application deployment with a time budget in mind. And the time budget is what is making the end-user experience good or bad. If you want the digital users of your services, consume your service from the digital uh, devices, to be happy, you have to be very quick and to stay below one quarter of a second, yeah. basically, end to end. And at the bottom of the diagram, you can see that it's very hard to stay within that budget, specifically for the devices connecting through that 3G, 3G network. For wi wireless devices, it's really a hot topic. So, um, if uh, the cloud conversation is centered on the data center side, on the right, um, you have to understand that the network latency between this data center and your end user is really, really important. Okay? So it is useless to have everything in a very nice data center if after that the, the packets have to cross oceans to go to your, to your users. Okay? So this is a problem. <coughs> and, um, at Dimension Data, we have uh, started to address this problem very specifically. So first, we are very proud of the performance levels of our data centers. So that's the first uh, building block. We ask an external company uh, to benchmark us against the competition. It's a written report. It has been published in July. It's available to you. And uh, it helps a lot to understand what is the challenge on the computing aspect of your, of your service. The second aspect of, uh, second thing you would like to need is a global virtual private network across your virtual data centers. And on these diagrams, I have mentioned the uh, public MCPs, the public data centers that we have or that we are building, okay, the green things. Um, the ring in the middle is the private accelerated network we have built across these MCPs. 
and it's built on entity links as a network provider. It's built on Cisco technology, and we have added riverbed acceleration devices between that. And the way we have designed our public cloud service is that when you create a virtual machine somewhere, for example, region one or region two, um, you will benefit automatically from some private addresses, okay? And these addresses are routable across the network, meaning all VMs can, can discuss uh, between them automatically. You don't have to uh, configure something special to do that. So when you deploy VMs at uh, dimension data, first, traffic flows very naturally. You don't have to do something special. And secondly, it's very performant because of the uh, private network in the middle. Um, and at some point, you can even consider to control the um, relationship with your end users through an equivalent to a CDN, okay? So the diagram here has been used in a, for a real customer story. At the top, you have a website, and the problem here is to maintain a single website. You don't want to, to, to duplicate that. Uh, and at the bottom, you have to serve customers everywhere. So you can, you can contract with Akamai to do that or with another CDN provider. The problem is that you, you are putting someone in the middle of your relationship with your customers. Okay. And the big motivation to put that in place instead of Akamai is you want to control the delivery points of your application. Uh, and in this diagram, you see we can deploy um, Stingray appliances, virtual appliances, in our public MCPs as virtual machines. Um, the website can be installed as a virtual machine on our MCP, and in that case, the traffic will be automatically accelerated in between by the uh, steelhead appliances. Very efficient, very simple to manage, and, and very cost effective. So that was the first point. Um, cloud chief officers have to manage the brand experience. The second point is on the code to market, how to be agile while releasing products. And what, from what, what I can see right now, um, the biggest problem is the multiple cloud target, okay? Meaning that most of our customers are doing software development on the left, using Scrum methodologies, Agile methodologies, and now they are deploying not only to one cloud, but to two or three different clouds with different abstractions, different APIs. And this is a problem, um, very complex problem because each cloud is coming with different kind of abstractions of the services. And this has to be reflected in your toolbox here in the middle. So each time you are adding a, a cloud service provider to your portfolio, basically you are, you are augmenting the complexity of your software toolbox in the middle. What can be done? Um, this is also a slide coming a, a real case. Um, and um, you see multiple cloud Procurement is something really important right now, and the key is the API, really the key of the API. So, um, uh, two years ago, customers went to us saying, can you provide everything, the portal, the service, whatever. Now there is a clear separation between the portal on the left and the usage of the service on the right. Um, and an interesting thing for these customers, they are saying, we don't want to buy, we are buying infrastructure, but this is not what we want to provide to our end users. Our end users want a, com a complete stack of services. And for that, we have to add to the basic infrastructure some services, and this has to be provided also by a third company, in this case, Wipro. Okay? So a combination of products, of services, fully integrated into a corporate catalog. It's not that easy to, to create that and to maintain it over time. Very complicated. But the API is the key. Another example from a, a software developer environment to show you what is uh, the new kind of uh, software toolbox we have. Um, this is a case of uh, a company uh, developing uh, uh, complex services. So the implementation of a service is made of different virtual machines. And what is done here is that through the API, when a customer is engaged, they create a set of virtual machines. It's not done through a portal. It's done automatically. Okay. And these VMs interact after that with some configuration servers, the chef server here, which is finalizing the configuration. So you have to build an architecture with multiple technical steps to finalize uh, the automation of your service, the provision of your service. 
So when the cloud has been defined by the NIST uh, three or four years ago, I believe, one key attribute of cloud computing was self-service. Remember that? You need a portal. So this is how the cloud started. You need a portal. But today, more and more self-service is meaning using the API and automating things through the API. And it's going to a point where the API can be used externally or internally from the application itself. So if a, a, an application needs more resource to compute something, then virtual machines will be added through the API so some VMs will create other VMs or manage other VMs through the API. This is a level of, of self-service we are seeing more and more. Third point, business agility. How to get the most from your ecosystem. Um, Virtual Clarity provided this slide and it explains, um, uh, so Virtual Clarity is a, is a consulting company and they are advising one of our customers. Um, and uh, this is a move to the cloud, okay? expressed in a diagram, before, after, okay? And uh, you can see on the right an ideal world where everything has been cleaned up, no mess, uh, you know why you are doing things, it's very timely thing. The reality is more complex than that because you, you want to industrialize with the cloud, that's for sure, but you don't want to kill the specific advantages that are making your business different from the business of others, okay? So it's, it's still today a complex thing, and more and more the procurement people are not submitting RFPs. They, they are seeing their role more and more as validating an offer from cloud service providers that they validate and they put that in the catalog and let the business units select what they want to use. More and more we are seeing that. Um, for SaaS providers, so ISVs or software providers, um, many of them started to go to the cloud as a way to extend their reach. So you started with a, a fully managed stack on the left, and then you say, well, why not go to the cloud? Instead of managing myself the hardware, it would be easier to benefit from the services from others, and you are going to some infrastructure as, as a service in the middle. But the next step is that you will need more management power to manage these virtual servers in the middle. And we are seeing a huge demand for people not only wanting infrastructure as a service, but manage infrastructure as a service. Meaning that in that case, we are providing the basic infrastructure and we are also adding on top of that the service to manage that. Uh, meaning that the software developer can focus on what they are good at, which is developing software, not managing servers. So it's not, it's not PaaS, it's not SaaS, it's really manage infrastructure. Um, another item that is very important and we are seeing that more and more is security. Uh, security cannot be managed properly, um, independent by, by components. It has to be an holistic view of what you are doing. And uh, we do have some professional services and, and good competencies in, uh, in security. This is a diagram coming from a real report, a security assessment we made for a, a big company uh, in Belgium. And uh, we measured um, the security of their existing uh, systems and the risks to go to the cloud, application per application. And this is a kind of report we can provide afterwards. We can say, this application is really well designed for the cloud in terms of security. There is absolutely no risk to going to the, to the cloud, or you can even reduce risk compared to your current situation. But for other applications, it, it may just be the reverse. And you should avoid to put that application to the cloud for security reasons. So this is a kind of, of conversation we have more and more with our customers. And the most important point here is that you would like your service provider, your cloud service provider, to provide you with a holistic view of the cloud, not limited to the portfolio of cloud services you have. So in that case, we, do it, we did the benchmark not only for our own cloud services, but for cloud services provided by others. And this is really important to have this transverse view of things. Last but not least, we are also eating our own dog food, okay? So meaning that we are converting our own IT to the, to the cloud, uh, especially SAP. And uh, many of our customers are, are asking us, how did you do that? Uh, how to do that for ourselves, okay? And we are very happy, I will not enter into the details of that slide, it's, it's, it would be too complicated, but we are happy to share our experience. That's a message. We are doing it on our cloud, and we can share that with any customer wanting to do the same. We do believe that the cloud still today is innovative, 
And because of that, knowledge sharing is key. And this is one of the reasons why we are here at EuroCloud, by the way. Uh, it's an ecosystem, and we, will, we want to be part of this ecosystem. It, it, it is part of the cloud proposition. So, at the end of the day, um, we are very happy to engage with any cloud chief officer on the earth, on the, earth, on the planet, because we believe that we have a very uh, strong managed infrastructure, um, able to provide your services worldwide. Um, the API is really strong, and we have a good experience in integrating that in very diverse environments. And also, we believe that we, we provide the holistic view of the cloud services, so it's not only about engaging for dimension data to get some VM somewhere, it's more about getting access to the knowledge behind that, and that's very important to run the business correctly. Thank you. No questions? Some questions? Wow, oh, I'm impressed. Let us provide you with a special Yes. Well, first, first of all, um, uh, we have a meeting room here. If you have any questions for Bernhardt or any of the Dimension Data people, uh, our room number is F34. Um, and also at 5 o'clock, if you're still here, hopefully you will be, because there is a cocktail reception, I believe, as well. Uh, we're giving away a, a Bluetooth wireless speaker uh, made by Jawbone Jambox, and it's really nice. Everybody that has one says it's the greatest thing ever. So... Grab a raffle ticket at our booth, and uh, you might be the winner. Thank you very much.